everyone has a little devil sitting on their shoulder as we approach the explosive season finale. By the way, good news, we will be getting a season two. And with that news, we're going to start this off. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... Gifted, episodes 12 and 13. Extraction and extra... No, that's Crossroads. Oh, God, now they're doing it with Cross. Uh, can we please do better next season? But okay, Gifted has been doing amazing titles notwithstanding, and everything is going great. But you know what, with all this talk about alpha mutants and the powers they have, I want to talk to you a minute about a cartoon that has nothing to do with this. This is Graviton. Graviton is one of the most powerful villains in the D in the Marvel Universe, short of maybe Magneto. He's at the very least one of the most powerful, normal, non-celestial powered or cosmic powered beings. He controls gravity, much like the duo that we've learned about in the last couple of episodes. This is him kicking the butt of the Avengers. That's giant man Thor and Iron Man just getting thrown. And I have to say, he is so badass that yes, he can fight whole teams. He is so badass he can just decimate whole teams. But the scene in question that I always remember is from, I think it's the end of the episode. He says, I'm so powerful in this, I'm so powerful in that. I might be the most powerful one there is. And then Hulk lands and looks at him and says, I beg to differ. Sorry, I just had to point out just how powerful the gravity control was. And that scene is so funny in my mind. But okay, before we get going too far, some of you don't know what I do here. What I do here is I review stories like this as they come up. I do Throwback Thursdays every Thursdays to review older stories. And every Sunday I do a theory video on how and why we do stories, how we tell them, why we tell them, all sorts of fun stuff. If that sounds interesting, click subscribe, or maybe just click subscribe, share and like this video because you like Gifted and want to see me review more of it. Now I'd be hesitant to say anything other than Happy Martin Luther King Day to most of you. Because, let's be honest, they timed this season finale to end up on the day where someone fought for civil rights for a reason. Because all season, we have had lots of gray and lots of intricate political moments. And it all comes down to this. People fight for a world that they believe in. And Stan Lee knew what he was doing when he decided to make an oppressed people be the heroes of his story fighting protect a world that hates and fears them. Now, I don't always like the analogy, especially the second part of it where we had a supervillain based on someone who was fighting for mutant rights, or based on someone that was writing, fighting for civil rights, even if he was the more violent of the two, but okay. It's an interesting thing to think about today, as it is the last two episodes lined up with Martin Luther King Day. An important thing to remember is that, much like any of the characters on this show, in the real world there are no superheroes. There's no one that's always Captain America, always right, always doing the right thing. But there are people that are pushing us, pushing us to be better, pushing us to have a better world. And there are people on both sides of these arguments that are trying to help, even if some of them are totally misguided and messing up on how they're doing it. But this family drama has totally taken on a life of its own. And before we get started talking about tonight's episode in particular, I guess we need to throw this up there one more time. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Bah, dun, dun, dun. So throughout the season, we've had a lot of great themes. Tonight, there's a couple of questions I have. Though. Do the sins of the father traverse to the son, well, daughter in this case? Is who you are based on who you were born to be or who you choose to be? And maybe most important of all, do you have to hate everything you fear? Can you put aside that something is different and realize that maybe there's more the same than is what's different? And finally, when we create these hate groups, when things get so bad that we have government agencies talking about how different that other over there is, is there any hope for any humanity? Okay, that was slightly more depressing than I wanted to go. Here's a picture of the cuckoos in short schoolgirl uniforms to change the subject real quick. But okay, so we know that the cuckoos are working with the resistance, the cuckoos actually work for the Hellfire Club, 
and there is a threat so bad that it's somewhat understandable why they're working together. So the episode starts when good old Ahab here, Dr. Campbell, goes on about this whole thing about genetics. The difference between one or two, off or on. The idea that humanity and Homo sapien, I should say, evolved but somehow overtook the Cro-Magnon and the others that came before it. Popular theory is actually that they worked together and that they ended up just integrating and becoming one evolutionary step, but of course that doesn't match the mutant hatred phenomenon. But I want you to think about that for a second. Just on a genetic level, someone is so different from you. Would it matter? Does it matter? I mean, seriously, at the end of the day, we're all fighting for this world. We're all trying to pay our bills. We're all trying to just get along. Does it matter that one person has the ability to magnetically bend metal and the other one doesn't? Only if you get into a fight with them. Now, yeah, there are some scary, scary things out there. We've talked about mind control. We've talked about memory changes. We've even talked about energy blasts. I mean, there's a discussion at one point where they talk about gun control and where that falls down on this. And I want you to think about that for a minute. There are people that literally think that no one should have an AK-47. And there are people that think that you should be able to have anything short of a nuke if you could afford it. And somewhere in between there, you have the fact that what if this wasn't something you could buy? What if this wasn't something you needed registered? What if this was just you? You had the power of a bazooka behind your eyeballs or the ability to change someone's mind. But that's where this big meeting of mutant haters comes in. And I love the fact that they even make a joke of it. Well, they couldn't very well just call it kill the muties. So instead, they call it protect our future. But I want you to think about that. Some of those people probably are just there because they're scared, and they want to do exactly what that name implies, protect our future. But while the main group of heroes and villains are out trying to grab Campbell, the family has to go protect one of their own. Specifically, Grandma is in trouble, because anyone related to them could potentially know something. And there's some interesting interplay, and I really liked the mom being quick on her feet. But the most interesting happened when Sentinel Services showed up. Now, yeah, the Struckers were able to take down two guys with guns easily enough, but what really made it interesting was what happens when two Struckers go after each other. Now, their powers rebounded off each other, and as such, knocked them both down. But at the end of the day, that's not really even the most interesting part about this. The part that really has to drive it is the wedge that's being driven between the family. And this gets played up even more. When they get back to base and find out that the others are in trouble, which we'll get to in a minute, we have this whole interplay. Well, maybe we should go help them. They're two states away. We can't. Well, we should do something. We are. We're protecting the people here. Well, we should be angry. We should be going off on the offensive. Why? Because the humans are coming for us. Wait a minute. The humans. Those other people over there. Those different ones. They're a threat to you, and you're afraid of them, so you want to attack them? That sounds kind of familiar. And good old Dad Strucker pointed out, am I coming after you? Is your mom? It's not humans. It's Sentinel Services. And even then, it's not all Sentinel Services that are a problem. Campbell. Campbell's a problem. Grade A problem. But okay, so, the Cuckoos and the Hellfire Club which they make sure and showcase has an extremely long reach and financial backing up the wazoo, have taken our four main cast members and have brought them to this place where they want to kidnap Campbell, rip all the information out of his mind that could possibly matter, and use it to stop them. And this is definitely a which devil do you go with? Do you go with Campbell, who's pretty much going to try to obliterate mutants? Or do you go with the Hellfire Club, who, even if they're using bad tactics, are at least fighting against them? And then you have that whole question, and we get this really interesting thing, something I've used in some of my own writing. When our soldiers on the battlefield run into people who are potential allies or potential enemies, we always go with how much they could help us, not whether or not they're good people. Just, you know, 
because humanity is not really always that good at being good people. So they chose the devil they knew and said the enemy of my enemy is my en is my friend. Okay. So the cuckoo's plan is pretty simple. Get a rich man who has an invite, mind control him, get into the conference, use Blink to teleport them to some place where Campbell will be alone, and then grab him, teleport out. Now, of course, the fact that they're using the X-Men's mutant resistance instead of Hellfire Club members to do this, okay, yeah, maybe Blink's unique. Maybe they don't have a teleporter. But I'm sure they have an energy blaster and a tracker, so I'm just saying. But all right, they're also playing a little bit of a long game here. Polaris may or may not know who her father is. It appears she does not know he was Magneto. If in this reality it was Magneto as well, but I, I'm guessing he is still, as of the point in the episode that I am, right at the break. But they're playing off of him and the idea that, hey, maybe you're more like him than you think. Maybe you're a master of magnetism, but you're also a mutant terrorist. And that's going to lead to the main question of the second episode of this. Are we our father's children? Are we our parents' children? Do we inherit from them their innate sense of right and wrong? Do we accept? Do we belong to them? Or are we our own people that are influenced by them, but get to grow up and make our own choices? And of course, this is twofold, because yes, Lorna has to worry about Magneto, but the Struckers are really doing this too. Now, in their case, it's not direct parents necessarily, although there is a certain amount of are they their parents. There's also the are they their great-grandparents? Yeah, great-grandparents, right? Great-great-grandparents? Because at the end of the day, the Strucker line, the Fenris concept, is a pretty powerful one. And as of right now, they're kind of up in the air. Do we go with it or do we not? And of course, Sentinel Services is hot on their trail because... They have two new mutants. I thought gravity manipulation was pretty badass, as I said at the beginning of the video. But now they've gone and upped it. And they really thought this one through. Hey, wait, this guy can pick up on small, minute amounts of living material. This guy's clairvoyant. If we look for small, minute particles of people and then use the clairvoyant to home in on it, we have the perfect tracker. So both groups are kind of in trouble as we start the second part of the crossroads. X Road. Now the second and actual final episode of the night and final episode of the season kicks off into high gear. Lorna has gone off to assassinate Campbell with two of the cuckoos. Meanwhile, Sentinel Services is closing in on the mutant underground, and there's a great moment where they fight through the fear effect, because as much as they're the bad guys, they still have a little bit going for them. And this is where I want to once again point out that it's hard to root for any one individual, on, or for any side. It's only good to root for individuals in this show. But, we had another great moment while they're evacuating the Resistance. The guy who's been a jerk, the Invisible Man, is a jerk to the mom. And she has to sit there and tell him, look, you can hate me all you want once everyone's safe, but we need to get these kids out. And that kind of earns his respect from her. And that's far from the last time we see her take a leadership role. But all of the Struckers really are. But then we get this knockdown, drag out fight. And it's kind of funny because it reverses last episode where the Strucker family was dealing with all of the social and thought process things and the main cast was dealing with all of the physical stuff. No, we get a full knockdown, drag out fight. And once again, we have mutants fighting humans. And for a moment, you need to really think about that SWAT team that was standing there. And I want you to think about what was going through their head. They're police officers. They're going after criminals. And make no mistake, they are going after criminals. People who, at this point, are just shy of being declared terrorists. And these people have powers and are throwing them around. And at least one SWAT officer was dragged off the field. It's easy to say when the Hellfire Club's doing something, oh, well, they're the bad guys. But our main cast really is fighting the government. Now, this is where things get kind of dicey, because the Sentinel services were told, let this 
SWAT team get their try first. Because politically, it's better if we at least try not to go with the biggest weapons available. But I want you to think about that, too. If you were dealing with a threat, a threat as powerful as these mutants could be, would you be able to sit there and say, hey, we're going to use the lesser of our capabilities against them just because we want to look good and look like the good guys? <sighs> kind of a slippery slope on whose fault it is those SWAT officers got hurt, isn't it? But okay. So, one thing leads to another, and we get the gravity manipulators back, and then, boom, we're smack dab in mutant vs. mutant violence. I do wonder how much they saved up to make sure and have the special effects extraordinaire for this. And I also liked the escape plan of digging the hole using super strength and shatter points, and the fact that, yeah, everyone needs to help out because super strength can only do so much. So the hounds are coming. And these hounds are the badass ones, the gravity manipulator and kinetic manipulator. There was another one that had some sort of sonic scream. But we have the Von Struckers. We have Fenris 2.0. And they join hands and they say, we'll bring the whole house down. And you have to realize, this is, this is exactly the moment everyone should fear. The moment when children have to become radicalized. When children have to fight for their own survival. These teenagers started this series off going to high school, and now they have to fight for their lives. Children's soldiers is nothing to joke about, so I won't, but they had to hold their own against these two. But for as epic as that fight was, the true conflict of the episode was more inside the mind. The Cuckoos had finally gotten to Lorna and convinced her to rip apart an airplane, an airplane holding their enemies in it. And... You have to understand, I mean, these are people trying to kill you and your family, and the only way to stop them is to stop them. So you rip apart the plane and kill them. Except for, then, you are the monster they're afraid of. And then Sentinel Services has every right to say, you're a terrorist that brought down an airplane, and you're the enemy, you're the other. Or, to put it another way, I watched my daughter get killed. I had to live through that twice, knowing she would never wake up and come into my arms again. And I don't care what anyone else says. The person who was helping me, the person who, even if he was going too far, was there. And then he was gone, because someone was able to rip an airplane out of the sky. Well, I'll be damned if I'm going to just stand by and let that happen. If Hitler invaded hell, I would make at least a favorable reference to the devil in the House of Commons. It's so easy to get radicalized. Children soldiers. Children not waking up with their parents. Parents losing their children. These are all horrifying things and horrifying thoughts. But then we have to remember, Magneto didn't start out evil either. Even if he became that way. And the Hellfire Club, rebuilding it sounds like such a great idea. All we need to do is rebuild the infrastructure, use it as the resistance. But even that split a family. We watched as the Van Strucker family imploded. And now Fenris is split in half. The most favorable part of the episode, though, was the mutant resistance will return, season two coming soon. So this story is far from over. What did you think? I was blown away by just how intricate and thoughtful this was, and how much of this really, really matters today. And do you think that they go too far with their analogies, or too far in painting the grays? Let me know in the comment section. And of course, like and share this video, because I'd really like to get a conversation going. Today on Martin Luther King Day, I think it's a good day to talk about rights of the undertribe. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe. I'm trying to start up a whole community community where we can talk about why we tell stories and why we feel the need to make the other the mutant, to make the other the superhero and the supervillain, because we can talk about things with mutants that we can't with maybe touchier subjects. But for now, I hope you have a good night, and thank you for walking with me through the heart of the stories we tell. I'll do a season in review soon, and give this a full rating.